Cats out of the bag, friends. I really don't like watercolor pencils. There are so many brands out there, but they just feel like they're full of fillers, binders. They have a waxy feel, even though I know it's not wax. Ugh, I don't know. Blending feels impossible. Texture is king with watercolor pencils, and I don't always want texture. Okay, I promise I'm gonna stop whining and get to the point. There is one watercolor pencil. It's the only one that I'll use, and some of you might argue that it's not even a real watercolor pencil. That's right, ink tense pencils. And you guessed it, they're ink based. They feel softer, the color melts easier on the page. They give me that juiciness that I love about watercolor, but with the added control of the pencil format. I can totally get down with these. But you might have guessed, I use them in an interesting way. Today, of course, I'm using my set of Inktense pencils. I'm also using Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper. And you're probably thinking, well, of course your watercolor pencils don't blend on a rough paper, but it's what I like. And you'll see, it works. I love the control of these Inktense pencils, and so I always start off with really sharp points. This little Faber-Castell sharpener is my favorite. Like, give me all the money, all the fancy stuff, all the crazy pencil sharpeners out there. I've tried them, and this little thing under $10 is my go-to. And today, I'll be supplementing with a traditional watercolor palette. This is my Art for Joystick palette. Let's take a look at some of the fun ways that I use watercolor pencils. I've got smooth, kind of a medium texture, like a cold press, and then a also a rougher cold press. And I'm gonna be working through these techniques on each one. Laying down a, a really juicy wash of color here, and then going through just with some linear marks with a medium pressure, with a yellow watercolor pencil, and then with an indigo watercolor pencil and you can see what's happening when that pencil's going on the dry page versus the wet page. And again, let's look at what happens on a little bit more of a textured watercolor paper versus the smoother one that I started with. You can see all the ranges of textures that you can get. And how about that yellow pencil resisting the watercolor on the page? Love that so much. And then let's take a look at this same kind of technique on the rougher watercolor paper. This is Arches Cold Press, which is a little bit rougher than Stonehenge Cold Press. There's the yellow, and look at that going through the darker color. Actually getting a pretty fine line there in the damp, dark color. And then here's the indigo again, gorgeous. Now, obviously, the marks that we make on the smoother watercolor paper are going to be finer and less textural, but man, I'm so in love with how that yellow pencil worked on top of the damp, dark wash of watercolor. Really cool. Now you could try this exercise again and again with varying amounts of water on the page, varying intensity of pigment on the page. Run your watercolor pencils through those options and see what happens. Okay, the one really weird way that I, well, I think it's weird that I use these watercolor pencils and it's a big no-no. I've read all about how this is a big no-no. But I gotta be honest, I don't care because it's fun and I love it. That's right, friends, that's right. I dip my watercolor pencils right into my water. Okay, I literally dip right into my water container and start to scrub on the page. Now you'll notice that very quickly, you go from this gorgeous, gorgeous, juicy, melty pigment effect where it looks almost like you brushed on the color. Very quickly that runs out and you're getting the crayon effect. Now let's see what happens on the medium, the Stonehenge cold press. Runs out even quicker. And then as you can imagine, on the rougher Arches cold press, it runs out even quicker, but just the same friends. It's such a cool technique. And if you know the limitations of it, you know that that juicy melty pigment effect is going to run out quickly, you can re-dip your pencil more often, or you can just go with the flow and use that to your benefit in the particular artwork you're creating. Before we get into our feather full tutorial, let's take a closer look at that pencil dipping craziness that I love so much. Dip right into your container and then slowly with a light to medium pressure and see how I re-dipped there so quickly. Look at that dip, 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 and let it just smoothly melt into the page. And of course you can take a brush 
and go right over that and smooth it even more. And look how you can then smooth two colors together. That page is now wet. You've got a lot of dampness on that page. So blendy, blendy, blend all the way home. I love this. Now let's take a look. Contrasting color. This isn't very attractive, just for example's sake. And look at some of that fine line that you can now get over top of that damp surface that you've created. Dip again. Let's get that orange in there and really softly kind of burnish. Now that's a colored pencil buzzword, burnish, even though we're not using white. But that kind of just slow scrubbing, I'm gonna call it scrubbing, scrubbing the color onto the page slowly, steadily, and slowly building up the pigment. That's a scrub and blend it out with your brush. All right, let's get into the full tutorial. Now I just felt like a feather made sense today because we're gonna have all of the things happening, the washes, the wet and wet, the fine detail, all of it. And we're gonna bring it to life with a little bit of watercolor and a lot of watercolor pencils. I'm sketching out the basic form of this feather. And you know me and my teardrops, it's basically a teardrop with blunt ends on both ends. The iconic look of a classic feather has these kind of cuts or divots, I guess I could call them, along the edge of the feather. It's basically where the individual hairs kind of separate in area. So I make sure to put a fair amount of those in along the edge of my feather. Now I get it, it looks weird right now because it's missing all the beautiful wispy linear moments that these feathers have. But don't worry, we're gonna put those in later. Starting with some clean-ish water on the page using my quarter inch dagger and I'm not really creating puddles of water just a nice glisten on the surface of the page in the shape that I've sketched out roughly with pencil. I've already sprayed down my watercolor palette a few minutes ago and it's nice and softened up, good and juicy, ready to go. Grab your first color. I'm starting with, yep, a fluorescent yellow, really bright yellow, and just dabbing a few moments of that pigment in quickly to follow after I rinse my brush, a little bit of blue, dabbing along the edge here and there Seriously, friends, this is like a do what feels good kind of thing. You don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. I'm bringing in a third color now, this olive green. And my brush isn't very wet at all because the page is pretty wet. The point here is just dab in some pigments, a couple different color options. And then when you've got them on there, go ahead with a clean brush, a damp brush, and blendy blend them together. Now I would recommend not over blending because that's not terribly interesting. Leave a little roughness in areas, leave a little white in areas, and just again though, do what feels good to you. Okay, here is where things start to get interesting and where I bring in the watercolor pencils. I'm going with this kind of lemony yellowy green and I'm going to start adding some color very, very softly with a light touch evenly over the surface I'm trying to cover. So I'm not pressing too hard. The harder I press though with these and really with any watercolor pencil, the more pigment, the more coverage you're going to get. Notice I'm also doing a little bit of a downstroke starting at the top edge of this feather silhouette and downstroking a little bit to create immediate texture, immediate linear detail going in with a blue here and just scrubbing around a little bit, scrubbing and then dragging, scrubbing along the edge and dragging. And look there, friends, it's still quite wet. And this is what I love about ink tents. I can go into a wet area and the pigment that is in my ink tents pencil really softens quickly against the wet page. And that's the difference for me versus any other watercolor pencil I've tried. It just doesn't melt into the wet page as quickly or as effectively as I imagined it should. I'm going up along the edge here with a little bit of this medium yellow. And again, I'm doing a little bit of scrubbing right at the edge and then doing a downstroke towards the middle of my feather. I'm definitely varying kind of the pressure I'm using. So some areas are thicker and they get nice and thin and wispy as I reach the center of the feather. And that's right, you could blend these with your fingers, you could blend them 
with your brush. I love the kind of back and forth push and pull that these ink tense pencils offer me when I want to create a, a really nice balance between washiness and the explosive nature of watercolor and then a lot of detail, a lot of finer moments of detail. Going back down to the base of the feather here with my kind of grassy green. Friends, you know me, I don't know the names of these colors. And the same type of thing, you know, this would be similar to how you work with a colored pencil. And I don't know a ton about colored pencil techniques, but you kind of scrub in the color softly, subtly, you build up the intensity slowly with a light touch over and over. You don't go in with a heavy hand and push so hard into the paper that you do get a dark or a bright color effect, but then you have like literal scratches in your paper. No, slow and steady, consistent wins the race here. And I'm just continuing that work along the edge, scrubbing in color with kind of a, a light to medium touch and then doing down strokes every so often towards the center of the feather. And you can see how quickly the detail is being built up while still preserving some of the beautiful washy juicy moments from my base layer. Now I'm bringing in my liner brush and I'll be honest, the first thing I thought was, well, wait, what's the point of even using these pencils if you can get all this fine detail with a liner brush? And, and that's true, it's a valid question. Here's the thing, the liner brush is going to give you the ultimate control and the potential for the ultimately smooth lines that you might want on the surface of your paper. Absolutely, you're gonna have a lot more control on a cold press or a textured paper like cold press with a liner brush where you can really control how much water and how much pigment is on the brush at any given time. There is something really interesting though with the effects and the limitations of the marks that you can make with these watercolor pencils. And those textury yet juicy, intense and wispy at times moments that you can get from the watercolor pencils, you can't get from the liner brush as easily. And so I think it needs to be said, I'm a big fan of art supplies that give me magic moments in the margins of my work. And what do I mean by that? When you've been making art long enough, you learn how to kind of bully around any given supply. I mean, give me one watercolor pencil and a little bit of water and paper and I can probably make something pretty darn interesting happen. Yet with a lot of limitations, I can make that magic really explode on the page. So to kind of reiterate, cause I think that was about as clear as mud, these watercolor pencils, specifically the ink tense pencils. Personally, I think they have a lot of limitations, but what they're really good at is really specific in creating some incredibly interesting marks on the page. And while I might be able to recreate those super specific interesting marks on the page with other supplies, the ink tense pencils make it easier. All right, getting back to what we're actually working on, which is the feather friends. I've just been using the liner brush, adding some really lovely wispy moments. I'm gonna link my liner brush drills video below if you really wanna understand the ins and outs of how to use that brush. Friends, I also was going back in with my quarter inch dagger and adding a few more areas of more intense washes of color on the underside, kind of the belly of that feather. And now I'm just going back in with a dark blue. It's almost like an indigo on the underside silhouette of the feather. And again, scrubbing in some of that intense color. I'm slowly building that intense color up on the page. But remember, my feather, all my entire feather, even at this point, how many minutes we're into this, is still damp. And that is something I really want to note. The ink tense pencils and watercolor pencils in general are gonna be way more exciting on the page when the page is damp. When the page is dry, you're gonna get a whole bunch of texture and weirdness that you can't blend away very easily at all. 
So tip number one when working with watercolor pencils, work into a damp page. Heck, work into a wet page and see what happens. Pretty exciting. Tip number two, friends, have your brushes at the ready and use them interchangeably back and forth with your pencils. It's not an either or type of situation here. And tip number three, I kind of mentioned it earlier. Just know that if you start sketching onto especially a textured paper with watercolor pencils onto dry paper, you can go back in with as much water as you want, but you're probably never going to be able to smooth out those kind of like crayon moments that you put down on the page. What do I mean by crayon moments? That texturiness that happens when you slowly stroke a watercolor pencil across a rough piece of paper. So keep that in mind and remember tip number one. I wrap up this feather now by adding in some really lovely wispy moments along the silhouette, especially at the tip of the feather, to really just bring this full circle and have just this lovely finish of detail. And here, the liner brush is really important because when you've been making art long enough, you learn how to kind of bully around any given supply. I mean, give me one watercolor pencil and a little bit of water and paper and I can probably make something pretty darn interesting happen. But give me a few more supplies that do some really interesting things, yet with a lot of limitations, and I can make that magic really explode on the page. This brings up a limitation, again, of watercolor pencils. You're not going to get those clean, crisp, wispy fine lines, those graceful fine lines. You're never going to get that with a watercolor pencil. Now, friends, let's head into comments because I want to hear all the opinions. I know some of you love watercolor pencils, and I'd love to hear how you use them, how you're feeling about them. Maybe you're frustrated by them. Let's start the conversation and help each other out. And while you're at it, I'd love if you're having a good time and you're getting something out of this, give this video a boop. And that's a like. Okay, there is one more way that I love to use watercolor pencils. And so head here next to see what it's all about. And until next time, friends, happy painting.